Gentlemen, Antonio here. Let's talk today about the difference between a $200 and a $2,000 suit. Now we're talking to 10 times multiple. Many of you guys are thinking, Antonio, is it really worth the difference? I myself, over a decade ago, when I was shopping for my wedding suit, was in the same position. I'm trying to make a decision between a $200 suit and a $2,000 designer suit. And I, I didn't know what to decide. The real answer here is that there isn't one price point. There's you finding the best suit for you. And you want to pay attention to these details. You want to understand oftentimes if you do pay more, you should get more. You don't always get more. And I want you to be aware of this stuff so you can go out there and make a smart purchasing decision for you. So difference number one, fit. Now, what you're going to find on the $200 suit, that is made to fit as many body types as possible. And I know that's pretty general. There are probably some great companies out there doing something at the lower end price point. But in general, these manufacturers are looking to save money. So they look at a guy, he's five foot nine, and they make a suit for him. Doesn't matter if he's five foot nine, 250, five foot nine, 150. The problem is, for the bigger guy, they think, oh, just open it out. For the smaller guy, just bring it in. The problem is it isn't built truly for either body type. Everything is built square. Everything is built boxy. Everything is built with lower quality materials. And what we end up with are suits that oftentimes do not fit people properly. Now, again, there are exceptions to the rule, but what we find is we move up definitely at that $2,000 price point. You expect that it's going to fit better off the rack because it is made for your body type. So, so instead of them going after a wide range of different body types, they have specific body types. They go after certain models and there is much less range and they know when somebody puts the jacket on, it should fit them very closely. The key to that is it doesn't have to be a perfect fit. They can make minor adjustments and they're going to get a great or super fit. The problem with the other one is if it doesn't fit great, you can make major adjustments. They can try to rebuild the suit. You can take it to a tailor and he can spend $200, $300 on alterations, basically built the whole suit and it could still have issues. So that is the thing. And again, I don't, I want to point out that, you know, in this price range, you can look at custom. So if you are a hard to fit guy, and I know many of you guys are, you're incredibly tall, you're incredibly big, you are incredibly small. In that case, you want to look custom. I think it's one of the best options. Too few people are checking it out. Guys, I'm going to link you over to my 10 favorite custom clothiers. I linked to it over at Real Men Real Style. I go into more detail there. Uh, but in any case, Keep, understand that fit, oftentimes, if you go lower price, you're going to compromise and you're definitely going to need to make it up by taking your clothing to a tailor. So difference number two is going to be build. So I talked about it over in fit a bit, but usually the materials, everything that goes into the build of a lower cost suit is going to be of lower quality. Makes sense? They've got to make a profit. These companies are not charities. So if they're going to sell it for $200, that means that the person selling it to you probably bought it for at least hundred, maybe down to 80. And then the person that manufactured it, they had to, you know, make their money as well. So cut that in half. So we're talking, they maybe spent 40, maybe $50 and that's probably high on the actual build of the suit and that includes the shipping and everything. So the actual build of the suit, maybe 25 bucks. Now, how much you think about that, the cost of goods, $25 on a suit that you bought for $200 and that's, you're going to see that across the board in clothing. But what you want to think about there is okay. That means plastic buttons. That means actually in the shoulders that there's going to be foam here. That, that means they're going to use a fused canvas all of those details they're going to try to save. Now, as you move your way up, you're going to find that the cost to manufacture starts to go much higher. All of a sudden, you're using hand-packed shoulders that are individually built out. All of a sudden, you start to see handwork. And anytime you have handwork, you're going to see the price start to shoot up. That's why things like bespoke clothing are so expensive. Not that they are necessarily better than made to measure, which there is a difference, but bespoke is an art and you're going to pay a premium price for artisan work. So all the, the, the buttons, you start to see horn, all the, th the threading, literally the individual, the thread used to sew on the buttons and bring the suit together is all going to cost more. The inside, the canvas is not fused. It should have a floating canvas or a, you know, a, basically you, you start to see these things in the higher end suits and that's what you're paying for. And if you can't notice the difference here, if you know, I would advise you to go to the best menswear store in your area, try on an expensive suit. And all of a sudden when you go and you try on a cheap suit, you will feel and see the difference. 
Difference number three is going to be fabric. So, on the $200 suit, we're going to oftentimes see blends. We're going to see cheap polyesters. We're going to see fabrics that are made at a very low price point. Higher end, all of a sudden, we start to see mills that have heritage. A lot of these Italian, English mills, they have been around for hundreds of years. And when their brand, when you see Lasana, when you see VBC, when you see Holland and Cherry on the inside of the jacket and they're telling you what mill it comes from, understand you're paying a bit more for the prestige that comes with that. But also, the trust and the fact that these mills pay very close attention to everything that goes in there. On the lower end suits, you're often going to see they use recycled wool. The problem with that is recycled wool, when you get down to the individual fibers, very small. Virgin wool, on the other hand, can be three times as long. Why that matters is it will stand up to the test of time. Before I leave fabrics, I want to hit on the super system. So, I'm talking about when you see super 120s, super 180s, super 240s, whatever those numbers may be, understand they are not regulated. One company's super 120 is another company's super 180. Understand that those numbers are often there. It's kind of like megapixels in digital cameras. They keep thinking that if you put higher numbers there, people are going to think, oh, that's a better digital camera. And really, the sensor has a huge effect on this. The same thing is you want to pay attention to the mill, you want to pay attention to where it's made and actually feel it yourself. Just understand when you pay more, you should get a better fabric. So, difference number four is going to be the service. So, on the lower end price point, expect that you're going to have to take it to get it adjusted. And you can find sometimes a great deal there, take it to your tailor who you should know by name and get it adjusted. However, when you're at the higher end price point, they should have in house tailors that actually take care of this for you. It should be part of the service, part of the package. If a button pops off a month later at a higher end store, you should be able to go in and actually get that fixed, get that repaired. At a lower end store, they may not remember who you were and you may have to fight them and you may, you know, it, it could it could turn into an issue. So guys, understand that service is important as well. Difference number 5, the brand reputation. And guys, this plays into everything oftentimes at the lower price points and this is where you can sometimes get a great deal. You can sometimes find things at a lower price point that a brand is trying to build a reputation. Let's say they've only been around for a few years. So, they're going to come into a lower price point thinking that they can acquire customers and that this is going to be how they grow. When you find something like that, that is awesome. That's a great deal and I would love to hear from you guys in the comments down below on an up and coming brand that you think other people need to know about. Now, understand if a brand's been around 50 years, 100 years and if they've spent millions of dollars trying to build up their brand and their reputation, all of a sudden when Xenia throws their name on something, understand that the price goes up. When you know you see these higher end companies going in there, basically they can command that because of the name that is associated with it. If I tell you it's a Tom Ford suit, you can bet that the price is going to shoot up because it's associated with that designer. All right, guys, that's it. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And if you want more, go check out the support article. I have a cool infographic over there and I go into more detail. I link you over to a number of great resources. And that's it, guys. I'll see you in the next video.